Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Toolbox. My name is Joe Tool, and uh, wow, I'm really excited to get started um, with this series. It's been something that I've been thinking about for a really long time and never really been able to articulate uh, into what exactly it was that I wanted to do. The other day I was thinking it through and thought, okay, this is what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do. So, so the format for the show is 10 minute long or less um, snippets of parts of game animation or cinematics or sort of anything, advertising, anything that grabs my eye. Uh, and I wanted to do one every day, which is gonna be the challenge. And uh, basically I'm not gonna be critiquing it, I'm just going to be looking at it in detail and analyzing why I think it works. Uh, yeah, so the very first clip that I wanted to show was from Sekiro. This is uh, no spoilers or anything like that, it's just the very beginning of the game. Um, and it's using the grappling hook mechanic. So uh, yeah, here we go. Right, so I wanted to talk about why this works. Like why does it feel so good to do this? When you do this in the game, some, like it, it just kind of feels like a little bit Spider-Man-y. It feels like you're flying around and um, you know, web slinging, but there's something a bit different to it. It's more like point to point in instead of like the Spider-Man one, which is a little bit sort of more kind of fluid and, and rounded. Um, so yeah, let's just go into this frame by frame and, and, and draw over some of the parts that I think are really cool, like silhouette wise. Um, okay, so first of all, we're just gonna frame through here. And first of all, that's really interesting. I always thought that the um, hand flew off and then like grabbed onto something, but it looks like the hand actually stays put and like a rope flies out. And the really cool thing about this um, sequence, this animation that plays is the shapes that the rope makes. Like they're really not typical shapes. I don't know where they would have, like this one is kind of typical, I think. Like you get the impression that something has been thrown, coming out, going around like this. And we'll also look at what the body's doing around here as well. Cause like he's not on the ground anymore. At a certain point, he jumps or his feet leave the ground and he pulls his torso back. This is a really cool pose right here. And it's at this, at this moment when, let me just quickly fill this in. It's at this moment when the rope is pulled tight, I think. Yeah. So it's like kind of loose, tighter, tighter, tightest right here. And that's when it like pull, starts, you start getting uh, ripped over towards the location. And this is like perhaps one of my favorite parts is after you've done the grapple, the rope detaches and it makes these really awesome S curve shapes. Like look at this craziness going on in here. And you also get this nice frame right here, which I hadn't actually noticed with the hand up in the air and the rope retracting back into the hand. It looks like there's like a little like hook or something on the end to like, or like a little metal nodule that like lets the, um, lets the actual rope grapple onto something. Yeah, look at these shapes. I love it. And it's almost like, at this very moment, I'm like, it feels a bit like, you know, when you do the vacuuming and you push the button on top of the vacuum and the, 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 the cable like swings all the way back into the thing. That's kind of the vibe that I get from this. And I wonder if they recorded a bunch of vacuums or something. It'd be really cool to, to witness. Look at this, like, it's literally just an S. And it's all appeal all the time. And it looks like the, ha the hand even like breaks at a certain frame here, like it's backwards while the rope comes back in. I 
and I made sure there was another one in here because I wanted to like get a couple of examples. I think this, this one's probably the best one. Um, because you really get to see like the shapes that the rope makes. Um, and it, it, it feels a little bit different to last time as well, right? Like the rope is, is straighter for a longer period of time. Like if we go back here and look at this one, it's kind of like curly for a while as opposed to over here. Pretty extreme pose change here as well between this like antic which goes for maybe what do we got here when you push the button it's pretty much straight away one uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten between nine and ten that's when the big pose change happens and uh yeah it's shoot straight up do you actually see it land yeah, that's the other cool thing. Like you get this little puff of smoke effect play when the hook lands on its target. All right, let's look a bit closer at what Sekiro himself is doing here as he flies up. Because the mechanic, like it doesn't, this as a uh, mechanical object doesn't necessarily make a whole lot of sense. Like, I guess, there's, there would be like a lever or something on it that lets it retract or lets it um, like lets the the, the rope loose um, so that you could throw it but it would still be coiled around your arm so it would have to like in a moment the rope would have to detach from the hand so you could anyway that's not talking too much about animation let's go back to the <laughs> animation before I get too tied up in how the whole thing works all right so let's go forwards Here's this wonderful pose again where we get his uh, whole torso talked back right before his feet leave the ground. And the other cool thing to notice is uh, that at the moment that he pulls himself up, the rope isn't actually attached. It detaches right as his feet, his last foot leaves the ground. And that's one of the things that lets you do all these like crazy cool rope poses. Look at that. This is almost like this feels like an entirely different animation to this one. And in fact it is. You, you know, that's weird. I've finished this game and I've never noticed that the um, rope flinging animations were actually different. They, they, it just kind of felt natural, which is like a really good sign, I think. So in this one, Sekiro flings himself up, then his feet go over his head as he does like a forward somersault, I guess. Somersault that way and then lands on the actual grappling point and then in the second or the third one in the video when he pulls himself up he does this really cool looking at the thing he's not even looking where he's landing um, but his body's spinning around as he comes to a land yeah that's really damn cool So let's take another look um, a little bit closer this time at the sort of poses that he hits throughout this animation. We've looked a little bit at like the S shapes that this rope has been making. Um, and even like, I don't know what you would call these curves, but they're wonderful. Sort of lose it a little bit through here because of the lighting. But yeah, let's take a little bit of a closer look. I'll just change colors here as well at the poses. So yeah, as I said before, we have this one where he's like leaning all the way back. He's like doing the limbo almost right back here, which is such a cool idea. Um, and he uses that sort of talky limbo motion to rip on the um, grappling hook. 
and that pulls him forwards. And it's almost as if the motion of the grappling hook detaching allows him to turn his torso around right here. And he holds this pose for quite some time. Which is like really just showing off his design. Which is cool because in these games, like I feel like you spend a lot of time facing the back of the character as they're as you're like following them around the environment. And that, yeah, it's great that even in this motion, which you would expect to see more of the back of the character, you spend so many so much time, so many frames looking at the front of the character. So he holds this pose for a really long time, sort of slowly drifting upwards and at a certain point his head snaps around to look at where he's landing and this is when he hits the next pose which is this oops which is this the knee up shoulders still twisted there's so much appeal in all of this like all of the twisting that's going on Similar pose, the knee is still up, the foot is down, but the chest is no longer torqued and twisted, and the head is now looking down. Uh, and then we do a really nice, the knee is still up here actually, we do a really nice uh, inversion of the uh, elbows. So right here we have elbows like this, facing like uh, a W. So the gravity or the force is coming from this way. And then as he's coming down, we get this inversion right here. This elbow is still a little bit this way, but not quite. It's kind of hard to see what's going on, but there we go. This is when you see it the most, this and this. If you could see it from the back, it would be, instead of a W, it would be an M and these would be the elbows right here. And that gives you like the change of um, momentum as gravity is affecting him, right? So his, hand, his arms are dragging back. And then as he comes down for the landing, the, uh, the elbows lag behind. And I think you can actually see that way earlier on in the clip when he does a little jump. Let's just test that. Yeah. Knew I kept this in for a reason. Okay, so let's go. This is a great jump animation, by the way. We could almost, oh man, how long has this video been going? Let's keep it going. Uh, so he does the, a little bit of a corny three point pose, which is great. His hand, his fist actually touches the ground, which I love to see. And then in one frame, so how long does he spend getting into that pose? One, two, three, four, five, five. Five frames. And then straight into this stretch. So this is the squash of the ball. And then this is the stretch. Toes are pointed, but it's not a uh, linear, like the both the legs aren't completely stretched. This knee is up. Which actually is kind of interesting. It gives you like a, a, a view into the handedness of the character. Usually when um, the first thing that goes up is the right knee you know that they're right-handed anyway so yeah he goes up and comes back down and here again we can see what i was talking about before with the um this is almost like a classic spider-man pose here and we can see the uh right foot He's coming down first as well to just further confirm the fact that he's right-handed and also he's holding the sword in his right hand so you know and then we don't even really get to see the landing because it blends straight into the grappling hook animation and he spends a lot of time with his uh shoulder blades close together like this and his chest puffed out
So, what else can we say here? Probably not too much. I feel like we've, we, we've started to get a better idea of what was used to create some of the appeal in these poses and the appeal in like how why this looks cool. It's to do with the holding of the poses during the rope, uh, the rope poses stuff. Keeping the S curves alive. And then the use of showing the front of the character and using momentum in the elbows to help sell the weight. Um, that is also seen in the jump when we do this wonderful one frame transition between the squash pose with the, uh, the sword hand touching the ground uh, to the stretch pose over one frame when he's already left the ground. Um, and also avoiding twinning by raising one of the legs, usually the, the hand in this leg, um, the right handed leg, um, to further lift the character up in the air, inverting that when he comes back down lifting the left leg and touching down again. And just to confirm that, we'll probably see that happen more in these jumps. So yeah, as he lands, the first leg to touch the ground is the right leg and the left leg has the knee up. See it again, right here, landing on the right leg, knees up on the left. And we're also doing that shoulders, shoulder blades tucked in arms inverted as he's coming back down to this really cool like shinobi like flat flat as all hell on the rooftop right here cool so that's all this is going to be is me just talking about animations that i love uh i hope this is what people uh enjoy I know I really enjoy looking closely at this stuff and I hope people get a lot out of it. If you see anything else, an extra that you would like um, to talk about or anything in the video that you think I might have missed, please let me know in the comments or, or send an email. I'll have all my stuff in the link uh, in, the, in the section below. Um, so yeah, thank, thank you very much. Hope, hope you enjoyed. Cheers.